to this uh, lesson on active learning. Remember in your last lecture, we discussed about the different ways you can be able to uh, engage your own students in the classroom to make sure that they get the most from their learning when in the process of learning. Now we'll be discussing about uh, active learning strategies because when you're in your classroom, you make sure that your students are engaged, they are working on activities that will make them be collaborative, participate when they are actually working, and you can also be able to go to make sure that your students go beyond what they are doing in the classroom, like listening, just writing notes all the time, or executing some procedure, like solve the following question or activities like that. Therefore, when you, basically, when we use active learning strategies in the classroom, we are allowing our students to go beyond the act or habit of or taking notes on the classroom, in the classroom. Or some of the students may be sleeping as well, or some of the students may be saying, yes, we have understood why actually they have not been able to understand. Or in some cases, because they know every day we are doing like this, therefore they will be following the same procedure, what you do always in your classroom. So in this lecture, therefore, we are going to discuss on, best, on the best mechanisms you can be able to use when you want to implement active learning strategies in your own classrooms. Now, when you speak of active learning, actually, we, are, we want to help our teacher, you teachers, to be able to shift from the teacher-centric way of teaching to what you call the learner-centric way of teaching or student-centric way of teaching where actually you are trying, trying to transform yourself from the content-oriented learning style to what you call the learner learning or learning-oriented way of teaching, where the student is actually at the center of learning. And again, we are, you should be able to ask yourselves, am I teaching very well? Do, do I think my students are understanding what I'm actually teaching? So that is actually why we need to think of active learning strategies. So in active learning strategies, you actually make sure that you are explicitly uh, making your students be able to go beyond taking notes in the classroom or light, lighting notes in the classroom and therefore making them be able to participate in many ways in what, uh, what captivates them to be able to learn better. So yeah, in many cases you will find that as a teacher you have a lot of questions. You ask yourself some questions like I often, when I'm teaching, I often pause at some point and ask my students whether they have been able to understand. So I say, so did you understand? Yes. Some students will say yes. And you think your students have actually been able to understand, which is which may not be true in fact, but you think they have been able to understand. But again, sometimes you say, oh, I allow students to be able to interrupt when I'm teaching my lesson. But interruption may not be meaning that students have been able to understand as well. So you have to think the way is better you can be able to do that. And then in many cases you say, oh, I never hesitate to answer their questions. Sometimes students ask questions in the classroom, but then you think you are able to answer the questions and therefore you think, yeah, all my students have been able to understand what I'm teaching and therefore it's not a big deal to continue uh, doing extra to help my students be able to learn. And in some cases, a teacher would ask himself or herself that, oh, in many cases I show some videos or some of the demonstrations in my classroom, but that may not constitute what we call active learning strategies. Therefore, that's why we have to go to discuss about what you call active learning strategies, which will help you be able to teach better and bring about the data centeredness in your own ways of teaching. Okay, now let's discuss a little bit about the features of active learning. So basically, when you speak of active learning, is that you are trying to get your students in problem-solving activities. You give them activities to be able to solve during the class time. And at the same time, you could be able to elicit some ideas from students as well, because they'll be talking to each other, sharing resources, discussing among themselves. Therefore, you could be able to help them be able to think better. And then you could also help them to be able to figure out things and come up with new ideas and new expressions and new styles of learning as well. And of course, in the process, you help your students be able to work collaboratively. So collaboration is one of the skills that we need in the 21st century, which is very, very important for them to be able to have in this particular situation. Okay, now uh, this is a reflection spot where you have to keep your pen and paper light before you answer the, give the answers to the following question. How do you engage your students in your classroom? Which mechanisms, what activities do you do, you do to make sure that your students are, being, are engaged in the, in the process? Take your notebook and write down what activities or what strategies or mechanisms will help your students be able to understand the topic. Okay, I'm sure that you have been able to say uh, things like, or oh, sometimes I give a discussion sessions to my students. In many cases, I give debate questions where my students discuss on a particular topic and come up with answers. Or in many cases, I give them um, some projects or some project work where they do. 
Yeah, but in some cases, some teachers may have, might have not written anything because probably their ways of teaching is actually just coming to class with the notes on the paper or notebook, lighting or explaining the notes and then going away. So that would, might have happened as well. So yeah, now we are going to discuss about the different uh, active learning strategies that are commonly used. And these active learning strategies are those which are actually research-based. And one of the most commonly used uh, active learning strategies is what we call the peer instruction. So peer instruction is actually a way of teaching where you involve peers, students as peers, in the process of learning. But uh, the mechanism is that they are participating in many ways to be able to help each other when they are learning. And another one is what we call the think, pair, share, so which involves the three stages. In the first stage is the thinking part. The second stage is the sharing part when they are pairing two or three in a group. And the third part is when you share to your classroom. So thinking, sharing, and pairing is another technique. So we are going to discuss in detail one after the other and how each can help you be able to improve your own classroom in your own setting, in your own school where you are teaching your own setting.